Alrighty, welcome back to another edition of Fly Tampa Fly. We're still working on we're still working on all the logistics, but thanks for bearing with us. This week, this is our third or fourth week, and uh, we have switched our focus to a to focus in and hone our focus in on the greater Tampa Bay area, basically the small aviation, small uh, small business aviation industry. So without further ado, let me hit the right button and get into this. Fade. All right, here we go. This is awesome. This is so awesome. So I've been working on figuring out how to use all this software and I am getting there. I'm not a trained professional yet, but that is okay. Actually, I need to come up here to this and do this. All right, sweet. This is pretty sweet. So I finally figured out how to how to put a presentation into this thing. And I just continue to have fun with it. So here is a story I found about a group of pilots looking to create a, a license plate for, for general aviation within the state of Florida. And I'll just, I'll just go off my notes. I don't have to be a professional. You guys want a professional, go somewhere else. Here a, here's a Florida feel good story for you. A small group of Florida pilots designed a general aviation Florida license plate. Woohoo! They're working through they're working through the state's legislative process to bring the license plate to life. And they're doing this as a way to support and promote general aviation in the state of Florida. Did you know? That was in my notes. Did you know that Florida is ranked third in the United States for the total number of pilots, aircraft, and airports? Well, thanks to the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, now you do. And, of course, my little podcast channel here. So we want to take a moment and we want to applaud this group of pilots who are working to make this happen. If the bill passes, the group, uh, the group will have their work out, cut out for them to promote the new license plate because then you have to get people to buy it. And once this happens, you'll find them, they'll be promoting at places like Pancake Breakfast, uh, private air parks, and, of course, I've heard rumor that they're going to be at Sun and Fun if they get this passed through. So that's that's their that's one of their goals. That's the current plan. So stay tuned, and if you get the chance, write write one of those politicians in Tallahassee and tell them that you support the general general aviation license plate. So I haven't written them yet, but I, you know, as I read this, I think I'm going to take my own advice and write the politicians in Tallahassee and tell them I support I support a general aviation license plate. So kudos to these guys in the screen, up there in the screen, this way, I think it's this way, I think I'm pointing in the right direction. We got their names, it was part of the articles, an AOPA article, so I, I cannot take credit for, I just want to make sure I attribute, attribute the right people here. So there'll be no lawsuits today. All right, let's move on to the next slide. So one of the things we're trying to do, we're trying to promote small business entrepreneurship within the aviation community. And we encourage you, if you have time tomorrow, tomorrow is February 14th, 2023. There's going to be an innovation conference is what they're calling it, but it's a great way for you to meet other fellow entrepreneurial types. And you never know what ideas are gonna come out of this. But this conference, it's billed as Florida's premier innovation event. You're cordially invited to join the event on February 14th. 2023, in case you didn't know that, at Emily Arena in downtown Tampa, Florida. This will be an opportunity to celebrate, discover, and engage in the greater Tampa Bay area's innovation community. If you're looking to build a future and future aviation-centric business, what better place to be exposed to a variety of entrepreneurs from different industries? You never know what magic's going to come out of that. Oh, hey, look, that's in my notes too. You never know what connections you can make in the SNES community. If you want to be exposed to fellow entrepreneurs and innovative ideas galore, attend the 2023 SNAP Summit in downtown Tampa. You can view more details and register for the event by clicking their link, and we're going to put that in the description below as well. I've been there. I volunteered. If, hey, if you can't afford, if you can't afford to, well, you don't want to pay. You're going to have to pay for parking if you're going to park down there. But... 
they need they always need volunteers. You just serve your serve your shift, do what you say you're going to do, and they'll give you a ticket. You won't be able to go to like the specialty events, but you can get into the event and see all they have to offer. It's a great way to do it. I've I've done that multiple years in a row, and it's just a great way to get involved. And it, it's not just this event. Many events, many of these conferences, they need volunteers, and they'll get you if you if you're strapped for cash. This is a great way to do it. Kind of pay with your time. The volunteer works really, it's really simple, basic stuff. You might have to set up a few chairs here or there, but even then they typically have professional crews doing that. A lot of times they're going to have you walking around helping people, maybe handing out badges and very simple stuff, And but it needs to be done. So like I said, if you can't, if you can't afford it, go ahead and volunteer. They have a link on their website somewhere that you can volunteer. It's a great way to get involved. It's a great way for you to network and meet other people, especially if you're looking to get into the world of small business and and or entrepreneurship in general. Moving on. Sorry, I'm working on my process. It's not smooth yet. I need a production team. Oh, wait, I'm the production team. Oh, I'm out of order here. <clears throat> All right, so I'm out of order. We'll roll with it. All right, some Wal some Walmart customers in the Tampa Bay area, did you know they're able to receive their groceries and items via drone delivery? Well, they are. Now you know. The Tampa Bay area, there is a Tampa Bay area store. It's one of 36 U.S. Walmart stores. I think, it's in, I, think I said it's in the Brandon area. Uh, it's one of 36 U.S. Walmart stores that serve as, they're, they're providing a drone delivery, it's serving as a drone delivery hub. Walmart has essentially, well, they, they have partnered with a Virginia-based tech company named DroneUp to offer the new delivery option for customers within one mile of select Walmart stores. The company is rapidly expanding its transportation methods availability, and in, recent, in a recent company announcement, Walmart said, well, in a recent Walmart announcement, they said they've completed more than 6,000 drone deliveries nationwide in 2022. This service is available for over 10,000 items. However, the drones are limited in the capacity that they can carry. There's cut them some slack, it's a small drone. They can only carry up to 10 pounds of cargo at a time. So contact your nearest Walmart if you live within one mile of a Walmart and are interested in learning more, more about it if your address, if your address is serviced. And we just saw the man, Myth the Legend from Verpal. He's in the house. Welcome back. He snuck in and out. You'll see him next time. We share this story because it's another example of the growing aviation industry opportunities in the greater Tampa Bay area. If you're interested in getting into the drone action, hey, this is one small example of the possibilities that await you. If you're looking to get into the world of entrepreneurship, this is one, one great way to get involved. Oh, I'm all over the place. Okay, so I was in order. Let me go back. Oops, you know what? I don't think, uh, oh, I missed this. Oh, there it is. All right, my slides are out of order, forgive me. We'll get on, we'll, we'll be on track next time. So here's another potential innovation opportunity. Recently, the FAA added a new optimized profile descent routes to 11 new airports. Florida airports included in this re recent list include Boca Raton Airport, Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport, Pompano Air Beach Airport, and multiple airports, other airports within the Palm Beach area. Of note, our Tampa International Airport already received its optimized profile descent route in 2014. According to the FAA, these new ODPs, OPDs, whatever you, however you want to pronounce it, OPDs to be cool and hip and throw out some acronyms. These, these profiles uh, safely eliminate the need for the fuel consuming stair step procedure that you see here in the picture. Under traditional procedures, air aircraft repeatedly level off and power up the engines. They're hoping uh, this burns more fuel and requires air traffic controllers to issue instructions at each step. With optimized descents, aircraft descend from cruising altitudes to the runway in a smooth, continuous path with the engines at near idle. A nice, stabilized approach, kind of what they teach you when you're in basics, primary training. So I guess they're going to practice what they preach, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, this, is, uh, this ODP is part of uh, the Aviation Climate Action Plan that the United, where the United States set a goal to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions from the U.S. aviation sector by 2050. To achieve it, the FAA has awarded over $100 million to research and 
and scale fuel saving technologies and noise reductions. They have awarded $327 million to electrify airport gate equipment and vehicles. They have invested $35 million for universities to help build sustainable action fuel supply chains. And they've completed research and testing on reducing fuel burn and taxi time. You can learn more about all of this at the FAA, about what the FAA and its environmental efforts at its sustainability gateway page. We'll also put that link in the, in the description as below. So the question you might be asking is why do we bring this up? We're just trying to show you within the world of entrepreneurship and small business aviation, there may be potential opportunities for some of you super smart people out there to kind of seek out some of these future government contracts that fall under this plan or any other plan that, that might happen in the future. So we're just trying to give you ideas to think about so you can help make the greater, the, the small business aviation industry within the Tampa Bay area start to flourish and grow. Just bring your ideas to the greater Tampa Bay area. That's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to encourage here. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, and then, uh, oh, nope, that's not, the, that's not the next slide. We're all out of sorts today, but you know what? We're going with it. It is what it is. All right, so now for a little bit of quick Tampa Bay local aviation history, Tampa Bay area, excuse me, because the people in St. Petersburg would be upset. Did you know in the late 30s, Goodyear chose Albert Witted as one of the first airports to base its famous blimps? You can learn more about this at the and other fascinating Albert Witted Airport historical facts by visiting the Albert Witted Airport Preservation Society website. Uh, I had some notes, but I seem to have lost them. So I'll do, do my best to kind of, I guess, wing it and talk through this. Actually, let me see if I can find my notes because I had some really cool notes about this, about this project that was done in the 19, 1928, I think is when Albert Witted came to be. But I'm not going to wing it. Let me, let me, oh, here we go. It's in this, this one. And as you can see, I'm still working on my own personal processes as well. I'll get better as we go. All right, so did you know that in the late 30s, Goodyear chose Albert Witted as one of the first airports to base its famous blimps? According to a local historian, not me, for many years, Albert Witted was a, was was one of a one of small a small number of airports around the world to have an airship hangar. It was built in built in 1928. The Albert Witted Airport was a modest facility with only one short runway. It was one of three existing St. Petersburg area airports at the time. It was the smallest and it was the only publicly owned airport. Politicians, go figure. Politicians saw the opportunity as an opportunity to attract more tourists from the north. There was a fellow by the name of John Lodwick. He was one of City of St. Petersburg's publicity agents, agents at the time. He saw an opportunity to showcase the area as a more exciting place, and I personally would agree with him. One of his achievements was convincing the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company of Akron, Ohio to home base one of its famous Goodyear blimps at Albert Witted Airport. In 19, September 1929, the St. Petersburg City Council appropriated a whopping $33,062 Woohoo! for a municipal blimp hangar to house the airship. That's probably millions. I didn't, I didn't calculate any numbers for inflation, but I suspect that's a lot of money today. That's probably in the millions. The blimp Goodyear arrived in St. Petersburg December 1929. Unfortunately, the venture didn't last due to the effects being, that being felt from the October 1929 stock market crash. Uh, with money drying up due to the Great Depression, the airship enterprise was closed, and by the year, by the year of 1930, every bank in St. Petersburg was forced to close. So, along with the Depression and the end of the airship, anger, airship era, this spelled the end of any potential for the for the venture in St. Petersburg. The, it, the overall airship era was concluded in 1937 after the Hindenburg, Hindenburg disaster. After that, the Albert Witted Airport blimp hangar was made, they actually made it specifically smaller. The building was made shorter in height and about half of what it was originally made. made. And the rumor has it, well, the remaining pieces of the St. Pete, of the St. Petersburg history, I'm, uh, I'm all over the place. They were torn down in the late 1990s. So they, they had a hangar and they tore, it actually tore the rest of it down in 1990s. 
reading uh, reading this histori this historian's comments, there is a rumor. Uh, he says it's true, so I, I've never met the guy. Rumor has it, though, there are remnants of the old Glimp facility still remaining in the area. Apparently, if you go along the west fence line of the airport, north of the blast fence, just past the picnic nook, I have not been there. I'll try to get a map for you guys if you guys ask for it. There are possible remains of the old Glimp tie-downs. Some guess that these concrete tie-downs are heavily weighed down with massive concrete roots and that they've just never been removed. So once again, you can learn this and other fascinating Albert Witted Air Airport historical facts by visiting the Albert Witted Airport Preservation Society website. It's going to be in the description below as well. Sweet. All right, we're rolling. Now, let's see. And then finally, I think, uh, actually, we're going to move on. Nope. Aha! <laughs> the question of the day. So this is just a general question. I don't really have any answers, but I really want you to think about it. And if you would, throw some comments in the vo in uh, comments below and share with me how do how can we make aviation training more fun? I was listening. I don't remember who I was listening to. Some some online YouTuber guru influencer type. The military trains 95% of the time and flies missions the other 5%, whereas we in general aviation, just about every time we fly, it is a mission. And we train the other 5% of the time. And that's after you, you know, of course, when you're training as a student pilot, it's all training until you get all your certificates. But after you get your certificates, how often do you have deliberate training? So I want to encourage you, if you're somebody that has all the certificates that you ever desire or want, how can we make training more fun for you? How can we incentivize you and encourage you to either take a periodic flight with the CFI? And I'm not talking about just on your, it's no longer the biannual flight review, but on your flight review. I'm trying to encourage you to do that before your flight, re flight review. Maybe quarterly, maybe quarterly, or maybe monthly. But just more periodic than every two years, every 24 months. That's what, that's what we're trying to, trying to encourage. All right, folks, I think that's it. That's our question of the day. Comments below. We're just going to leave it there. I don't know what else to say. I made a lot of mistakes, but that's the way it is. I'm learning a lot. I'm just going to post these mistakes on, on YouTube. I'll get better as I go. So I appreciate your encouragement, please. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. And as always, Oops, you know what? I didn't even fade. Oh, you know what? That's cool. I didn't have to fade. So, you know, what? I'm going to skip that. I had a whole had a whole screen. I was going to build a screen with my face, but you guys don't need to see, you don't need to see me in the whole screen. All right, as always, we have sponsors. So, thanks to our friends at Mind My PC. Those of you guys who already have small businesses, if you're sick of if you're sick of being your own IT department because it's not really what your expertise is, give my friends at Mind My PC a call or Reach out to them through their website at mindmypc.com and let us let us help you. You know, they're gonna help you, they're gonna help you do what you do best. They'll take off, they'll take the they'll take the load off of you so you can focus on what you do best. And that's your business. And then unless you're an IT person, then don't call us. But if you're not an IT person, which is probably the majority of you, give us a call. And uh, see how my friends at Mind My PC can help you. Thank you to my friends at Jetline Systems. They, they allow me to come into this room here in their conference room and use it for, to, to film and, and to record. So I want to take this time to thank them. And also, if you, have any, if you want to get into the world of, of flight simulation, give them a call and they can help you with all, their, all your flight simulation computer system needs. You want, it, you want to know about it, they can, they can help you. If, if you have a question and they can't answer it, they're going to help you. They're going to help you find the right right you know point you in the right direction so, so uh, reach out to my friends at jetline jetline systems if uh, you need anything in the world of computers and then finally in general just thank you if you're looking to fly i am a flight instructor so you can reach me here reach me by text message or you can reach me by my social media accounts and yeah, let's see if we can get you moving on your flight dream. If you have dreams of flying, and let's let's help you make it happen. And uh, that's that's it, folks. Thanks. Oops. You know what? I let me go back. I didn't even. Processes are broken. Here we go. This is my information. 
There you go. That's me. Now we're on. <laughs> now, we're, now we're on track. Once again, give me a call if you're in the local greater Tampa Bay area. Also, I'm looking for looking uh, to the future. If you know anybody that's interested in, in maybe a 90-day program, I do have a rental property of which we can talk about in the summertime. As a, you know, if they want to come learn to fly in the summertime, that's something I, I am open to, open to doing. I've got a place that I can rent on the beach, two blocks from the beach. So let's, yeah, reach out to me. Let's talk about it. If you're looking to do something accelerated, I think I, think I can help you make it happen. Actually, I not think. I know I can help you make it happen. All right, so thanks again for joining us, folks. And uh, I think we're going to call this, this a, it's a wrap. So have a great day, great week, great month, whatever, whoever, whenever you see this. And thanks for joining us. Like, share, subscribe, all that happy, happy social media bowl. All right, we'll see you next time, folks. Thanks a lot.